right, let's look at some original Atari 2600 games that will always be fun. Well, to me anyway. Now, I'm not going to include arcade conversions here because, well, I mean, with emulation, you can play the real thing, so why play any other version? All right, let's go ahead and get started. And the first game I want to look at is Adventure, created by Warren Robinette. And it's such an amazing game where you are on a quest to find the enchanted chalice and save it from the evil duck-shaped looking dragons. <laughs> Actually, I think you're trying to save it from the, uh, the evil magician, but he never shows up in the game, so uh, it's just the dragons. Come on. You also have to worry about the bat who will sometimes fly in and steal whatever object you have, which... I've had him actually come in and steal my sword away from me and leave a dragon behind. <laughs> that was that was bad. So yeah, I'm not a fan of the bat. He's a he's a troublemaker. But you do have to travel different areas of the map, including the red maze, the blue maze, the the, the white castle maze, which is I guess this is called the catacombs. But you have some things on your side to help you get through your quest, including the bridge, the magnet, and naturally your sword. And also, if you want to get into the castle, you know, a key, you know, that, that might be kind of important to use. And of course, Adventure is widely regarded as the first video game to include an Easter egg. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know if that's entirely true, but we, we've come to accept it. But Adventure, for me, it's just such a fun game to just, you know, kind of play for a couple of minutes. It's nice because it doesn't require a huge commitment. Not like Zelda. Alright, the next game I think is always going to be fun is Atlantis. And, you know, it's kind of your basic shooter game, but it has a little bit of creativity here. Because you can shoot in different directions. And essentially all you need to do is protect Atlantis from these invaders. Sometimes they come in fast and attack your bases and stuff like that. I've always been fascinated with underwater cities. I used to draw like these pictures of underwater cities um, with buildings and everything, but with a dome over top of it. And this game like totally reminds me of, of that and what I would have drawn back when I was a kid. This game also kind of reminds me of Missile Command in a sense, but without the missiles, you're just kind of protecting cities and stuff. But yeah, that's Atlantis. It's a simple game, but it's a lot of fun. Here's a cool three-pointer of a game, and one you might not expect, and that's Atari's Basketball. It's just so simple. I mean, you just go grab the ball and you, you shoot it. I don't know, there's something interesting about this game. And no, it has nothing to do with the fact that they were playing it in an airplane. It's certainly no NBA Jam, that's for sure, but um, I don't know, it's just, it's just pretty cool. You know, there's just some games that are incredibly simple, but they're still a lot of fun. And this game is way more fun with two players. But basketball, for me, it's a fun game. Now let's talk about Beam Rider. Now this is an Activision game that I'm pretty sure they kind of copied from a game called Juno First, but I don't care. This game is just so much fun. And I'm not even bothered by the fact that the graphics are not in that really annoying grid like most other versions of this game. In fact, I really think it helps the game that there aren't so many lines all over the screen. Basically, you have your ship that moves back and forth on these five points, and you just shoot the enemies that are coming down at you. You get a few different kind of enemies in the game. Basically, you start off against these saucers that you have to shoot a certain number of in order to get to the boss character, or boss ship, rather. Also, these indestructible asteroids will get in your way and screw you up. You'll get some enemies that will shoot you from the sides. You also have to be careful not to shoot your bonus ship that comes down, and you can get one of those per stage. You also have a missile that you can shoot at the mothership in order to destroy it. I don't know, I just love this game. It's such a blast to play. I could just play it for hours. Coming up is some BMX Airmaster. Now this is a game that just like totally blew me away when I first saw it because the graphics are just so incredible. Both the background graphics and the character animation is just fantastic. 
Basically, all you do is ride your BMX bike on this ramp as high as you possibly can and do some tricks and flips. And if you uh, land properly, you'll get points. And if you don't land properly, you'll uh, you'll die. <laughs> well, I mean, or at least have a really catastrophic accident. In addition to that ramp stage, you also have a couple other stages here, like this one where you just ride straight into the ramp as fast as you can and see how many points you can do. And then there's also the stage where you get to ride on a dock and uh, perform a jump. Really beautiful graphics here. This is one of the rarer games for the 2600, at least the red label cartridges. I personally don't own it, I wish I did. But I have played this through my cuddle card and through emulation over the years, and it's it's one of my favorites. I love it. And now sliding down the lane is bowling. That's right, bowling from Atari. Gosh, this game is just so incredibly simple. I mean, really, the hardest part about this game is kind of lining up the ball with where you want it to go. But I mean, isn't that common with just about any bowling game? In some variations, you can control how the ball moves down the lane. And yeah, I know it's nothing like real bowling, but that feature just makes it so much fun to me. Of course, one of the highlights is when you either get a spare or a strike. I mean, I love how your guy just kind of dances and makes that noise. It just cracks me up. I love it. So yeah, this game doesn't usually get a lot of recognition, but for me, this is a game that's just always going to be fun on the Atari. Next is Chopper Command from Activision, and this game is pretty clearly a Defender clone, where you just fly your chopper and you have to protect these trucks. But it is a little bit different in the sense that the enemy does not actually pick up the trucks. Well, I mean, they don't pick up trucks in Defender, they pick up your humanoids. But instead of trying to pick them up, they just, you know, blast them, which is something that you don't really have a lot of control over. So your job here is to just destroy these choppers and jets as quickly as possible, and also avoid getting hit yourself. I kind of wish that the first stage just had choppers on it that you were shooting, because they're bigger and easier to hit. The jets are very difficult because they're so narrow. But hey, at least they stay on the same plane, they don't move up and down too much. Also, this game has a really cool radar screen down below, very detailed. But yeah, that's Chopper Command from Activision, one of my all-time favorites. Next is combat, and this one comes with a slight caveat, and that is you need to have another player to play this game with you because this is a two-player only game. But man, is it a fun two-player only game. If you can get some friends to play with you, oh man, this is just a blast of a game. Of course, there's different modes. You can play as tanks or jets or biplanes. You can play Tank Pong, where the missiles bounce off the walls. You can play Invisible Tanks. You can have different maze layouts. And what's really mind-blowing about this game is that it has so many variations, but it's only two kilobytes in size. I mean, there isn't an Atari game this small that packs as much fun as Combat does. And yeah, as long as you have a second player with you, this game is always going to be fun. Beaming up next, we have Cosmic Arc from a Magic, which is the sequel to Atlantis. You might have seen that little ship flying away at the end of Atlantis when you lose. This is a pretty neat game. You start out by defending your giant cosmic arc from asteroids. And this part of the game kind of reminds me of Space Zap, the original arcade game. And then after that, you fly down to the planet and try to beam up these little alien guys and take them away into your spaceship. I don't know, there's just something about beaming those little alien guys up to your spaceship. It's just so cool. Of course, naturally, the game gets a little bit harder each time. The asteroids get faster, and there's this laser shield that tries to protect the aliens from getting beamed up. Also, you have a time limit, so you have to beam those guys up pretty quickly. Anyway, this is a really fun game, and in some ways, I enjoy this more than Atlantis and Demon Attack. Next we have Demon Attack from Imagic, and to me, this was always meant to be a Phoenix clone. And, you know, that's fine, because this game is really a lot of fun. It's got some really nice graphics. I like how the demons come in from the side and merge together, that's a really cool effect. 
But basically here you just shoot at these guys and sometimes they split apart. Sometimes they shoot different kind of bombs at you and you just have to shoot as many as you can and survive. To me, it's just the epitome of a early 80s arcade shooting kind of game. And, you know, it's one of the best. The Enduring Enduro from Activision is up next. And this is an amazing racing game. Basically, you have a certain amount of time to get to the finish line, but you have to pass a certain number of cars. And you drive through different environments. You know, you'll drive through a, a nice sunny day. Sometimes you'll drive through a snow patch. You get to drive through a sunset and through the night and then through a fog bank. <laughs> and then you reach the finish line the next day and it tallies up whether you have succeeded in passing enough cars to get to the next leg of the race, I guess. But I love how fast and smooth this game is and also how nice the road looks on the side. So one thing you don't want to do is hit another car. I mean, you're not going to flip over or anything, but it's just going to slow you down. And is it me or am I the only one who hopes to hit that little kind of divot on the side of the road so that I don't have to wait quite so long? I can't be the only one. Enduro's got some great graphics and it's a lot of fun. And again, it's one of those games that's always going to be fun on the 2600. All right, guys, next is going to be E.T., and I know what you're thinking. E.T. is the worst game ever, but it's not. It really is not the worst game ever. It's a lot of fun, actually, if you spend just like two minutes figuring out how to play it. You play as this little cute alien named Mur Murberzak. I think that's his name uh, in real life. <laughs> and he's landed here on Earth and he finds a friend named Elliot and he needs the pieces of his uh, communicator to call his buddies to come pick him up because he was stranded. But anyway, you travel the screen looking for those communicator pieces. And once you find all three, you just need to find the spot in the forest where you can call your friends. Of course, you do have to worry about the scientist and the FBI agent who's chasing you down all the time, but you can turn those off, which makes it a little bit easier. And yes, you do have to fall into the pits in order to find your communicator pieces, but if you're careful, you can land without injuring yourself. It's not really that hard. Again, this game, if you just take a few minutes, it's a lot of fun. And there's nothing like it out there on any other video game system. Of course, you may not think that's a good thing, but, you know, I personally do. Freezing up the screen is now Frostbite from Activision, and this is a pretty simple game where you just hop from ice flow to ice flow in order to build yourself an igloo to prevent yourself from freezing to death in the Arctic. And this game kind of reminds me of Cuber, but it also has a little bit of Frogger influence. And I find that you just have to be really, really fast, and uh, if you're fast enough, you can avoid the birds and the fish and all the stuff that's in the water. There's also a polar bear who comes out later to kind of mess you up there on the land area. But once you've landed on enough ice flows, you head to your igloo and uh, try to stay warm for the night. It's a pretty simple game, but you know, it's a lot of fun. And again, it's something you're not gonna find on the PlayStation 5. Now let's talk about Gremlins, which is based on the 1984 movie directed by Joe Dante. And in this game, your goal is to catch all the mogwai before they eat the hamburgers. <laughs> I guess it's after midnight here, and if they eat one of those hamburgers, they're going to turn into gremlins. But even if you save all the mogwai, you still have to fight gremlins in the next stage, so I'm not sure really what the point is. I guess that's the point, is just to get points. This game kind of reminds me of Kaboom in a sense, except you do have to control it with a joystick, which is not as precise as using the paddle controller. My more favorite stage is when you get to shoot the gremlins later. Of course, I don't remember Billy Peltzer actually having a gun in the, uh, in the movie. While I do really enjoy the 5200 version of Gremlins better, this is still a really fun game. And again, it's always going to be fun.
Coming to save the day next is Hero from Activision. Or is it H-E-R-O? Mm, I always just say Hero. Basically, in this game, you have a helicopter pack, and your goal is to fly deep down into a cavern and rescue the miners who have been trapped there. You have dynamite to blast the walls, and a laser helmet to shoot at enemies. The stage design is just so creative, although I do find that the easiest way to get through it is to look at the route that's going to be the most difficult, because you just know if you go down the other way, there's going to be something there at the bottom to injure you. The graphics and animation are really good, and the gameplay is superb. Naturally, it gets more difficult as you continue. There's always going to be something underneath you on the next screen that you're not aware of, or, you know, the walls are going to be made out of lava so you can't touch them and stuff like that. Of course, this game appeared on other platforms, but, you know, I've always felt that the 2600 version was just perfect. Hero on the 2600, one of my favorites that will always be fun. The classic game of Kaboom from Activision is up next, which is so incredibly simple. You use the paddle controller to move these buckets of water at the bottom of your screen to capture these bombs that are being thrown at you by the mad bomber. The game just gets progressively faster, and eventually there's just no way you can keep up with the mad bomber. Well, at least I can. Some people can. I know Mike Matei from Cinemassacre is pretty good at this game. It doesn't have a lot of graphics, but, you know, it doesn't really need any. It's just simple fun, and, you know, it just never gets old. Next is Kroll, based on the, I think, 1983 movie? Yep, I was right, 1983. Anyway, you play as Colwyn, who is defending your fiance, Lissa, from the Slayers. Unfortunately, you're just not gonna be able to defeat the Onslaught, because they just keep coming forever, and they will kidnap her and take her to the Black Castle. Of course, you can't just travel straight to the Black Castle. No, no, that would be too easy. You have to go to the Widow of the Web in order to have her tell you where the Black Castle is going to appear so that you can travel to that location and defeat the Beast. Traveling between sections is really cool because you get to ride these horses and uh, you get to pick up glaives and extra men along the way. But for me, the most fun is when you get to the beast stage and you have the glaive and you're throwing it at the prison that's holding Lissa. It can be extremely challenging to maneuver around the beast and it's most helpful if you have more than one glaive, that's for sure. I remember picking this one up back in the day and I don't know, I was just blown away by how awesome this game is. It really does capture the spirit of the movie. I mean, as much as a 16 kilobyte Atari 2600 game can. And now we have Montezuma's Revenge from Parker Brothers, which is really a mind blowing game for the 2600. You play as Panama Joe, searching for treasures in, I guess, the Mayan jungle. Honestly, I'm not really sure of the settings, and I really don't care. I just know that this game is just so, so cool. The graphics are fantastic for a 2600 game. The animation is really, really good. It's got so many different stages for you to explore. You know, each screen is its own puzzle that you have to get through. I mean, I really wish we had more games like this on the 2600. I've never been able to beat it, but I really enjoy playing this game. It's also been ported to other platforms, which are also very, very good. I think there is more of a modern take on this game. I think it came out for the, for the Switch or the PlayStation or something like that. But you know, that just proves to me that this game just, it just never gets old. It's so much fun. Next is a rather odd game called Off the Wall, which is kind of a breakout derivative. Basically, you're a peasant and you have to, I don't know, hit balls against the, I guess it's the Great Wall of China, and uh, hit this worm at the top, I guess. Makes no sense at all, but hey, you know, it's a fun game, and that's really all that matters. There's also these little power-ups that you can get to boost your abilities, and there's enemies that pop in occasionally to kind of mess you up. Sometimes it's hard to get that worm up there. You gotta, gotta keep hitting the ball until you get just the right angle to hit him. And then sometimes I swear I hit him, but he wouldn't die. So I think maybe you have to hit him multiple times or something. But that's an off-the-wall game for the 2600 that is a lot of fun. 
Next we have what I consider to be the absolute best version of baseball on the 2600, and that's Pete Rose Baseball from Absolute. I mean, it actually feels like a more updated version of baseball. I mean, it's surely a heck of a lot better than uh, Home Run or even Real Sports Baseball. I mean, you've got this nice batter pitcher view, which is, you know, completely indistinguishable from the uh, Sega Genesis World Series baseball. Did you ever think the 2600 could do graphics like that? Not to mention the physics are so good when you hit the ball. Sometimes you do run into a bit of a problem because your infielders cannot move up and down very much and uh, they're, they're kind of stuck on a, on a plane. I'm sure that's just a limitation of the 2600's sprite abilities. But hey, if you know that going in and you know which players can reach the ball, then you know it's not that big of a deal. So if you like baseball, definitely check out Pete Rose Baseball for the 2600. Jumping into the video now is the classic of all classics, Pitfall from Activision. Does it get any better than this? This is one of the greatest games, I mean, ever. Not just on the 2600, but ever. The graphics are really, really fantastic. There's like 256 different screens. I love it when Pitfall Harry swings on the vine. It's just so smooth. And whenever you pick up a, a gold piece or a silver piece or a diamond ring or something like that, and it makes it little da -da 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 -da, it just feels so good. It feels like you've really accomplished something. And for some reason, the 2600 version is the best version. I don't care what anybody says. The Intellivision version sucks. The ColecoVision version sucks. Even the 5200 version is not as good as the 2600 version of this game. Hands down, this is the best version. Next we have Pitfall 2, which is the absolutely amazing sequel to the original Pitfall game. Naturally, the graphics are incredible. The size of the map is absolutely huge. And I love how you get to go swimming. That's like my favorite part of the whole game, where you dive off the uh, the waterfall into the, into the big pool of water. It's just so fun, it's so cool. There's just so many more enemies in this game than the original. You know, you got scorpions, you got bats, you got condors, you got electric eels, also frogs. I mean, this game really upped the variety level, that's for sure. And then let me mention the incredible music in the game. This is definitely not being produced by the Pokey Chip, that's for sure. David Crane developed a special chip just for the music in this one. But listen to it, you can even hear like percussion in the music. It's just mind-blowing how good this game is. Very happy a couple years ago to meet David Crane and you know, basically tell him how much I loved Pitfall 2 and, and uh, he signed my copy of the game, the very same game that I used to play when I was a kid that kept me up at night. <laughs> so that's that was a, a dream come true for me. Radar Lock Blaster TV screen next and is a first person jet combat game for the 2600. I believe this was created by Doug Neubauer, the same fellow who created Star Raiders and Solaris. And you can very clearly see that this is using the Solaris engine, but hey, you know, that's perfectly fine because this game is a ton of fun. I love how the horizon rotates left and right as you fly, so cool. Basically, all you have to do here is, you know, shoot the jets, fly as fast as you can, and, you know, try not to die. It's a very simple game, kind of reminds me of Afterburner a little bit, but it's fun, fast, and uh, very enjoyable. And now, Indiana Jones swings into action in Raiders of the Lost Ark, which could also be a controversial pick like E.T. Strangely enough, both of these games were created by Howard Scott Warshaw. <laughs> But I love Raiders of the Lost Ark. I love that you have so many different screens to visit. It really feels like you're on a huge adventure with Indiana Jones. You know, basically your goal here is to find the Lost Ark. It's a really complicated game and it took me probably like 15 years to actually beat it. But once you figure out what to do, it's a lot of fun. 
The only downside I can see with this game is that you have to have two joysticks to play it, so it makes it a little bit tricky. But for me, this is a game, it just, it'll just never get old, because I love it. And plus, I mean, you can never go wrong with Harrison Ford and Steven Spielberg. Notice I didn't say George Lucas. I'm kidding, I love you, George. <laughs> Next we have Real Sports Volleyball, which really blew me away when I first played it. I was already a big fan of uh, the NES volleyball game. Well, Super Spike V-Ball, I should say. And this game really reminded me of that. I mean, albeit much more pared down and everything, but still, this is a lot of fun. I mean, you just, you get to serve the ball, you get to spike the ball, you get to hit the ball back. It has all the elements of a really fun beach volleyball game. And honestly, I think this is the best of all the real sports games on the 2600. It's certainly the most accessible. I mean, all you gotta do is hit the ball over the net. It's not too hard. I like that you've got the sun in the background and you got the waves crashing against the shore there. All you need is some surfers and a shark out there. Coming down the river is River Raid from Activision. In this game, you travel down the river of no return, shooting helicopters and ships and bridges and planes. Of course, the main goal is to shoot as many bridges as you can to continue on to the next stage. You have to fly over the fuel tanks in order to continue flying or your jet will run out of fuel, duh. If you're suicidal, you can fly through the game really quickly, or you can take your time and hit all the different uh, enemies. This game is in my top five Activision games of all time. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. And like I've said before, there's something special about the Atari 2600 version of this game. I mean, sure, some other versions have better graphics and everything, but this one just feels right. Now, there's no Terminators on the 2600, but there are robot tanks from Activision to worry about. And I always saw this as a Battlezone clone. I mean, it's pretty obvious you're in a tank and you're shooting other tanks. But this one has some really cool features to it that Battlezone does not have. For example, in Battlezone, when you get hit, that's it, you're hit. But in Robot Tank, if you get hit, you might just lose your radar or your viewfinder or your tank might be slowed down, whatever. So it makes for a much more, I don't know, I think interesting game. It also has some really cool graphics and I like how the environment can change over time. You know, it'll get dark or, uh, you know, foggy. Makes for a very interesting game. And I like how the tank kind of bobs up and down as you move. It's pretty cool. Robot Tank. Definitely a game that will always be fun. Here's a game called Skateboarding by Absolute Software. And in this game, you just kind of tool around your town and try to find all the jumps. Well, I mean, you have to find the jumps and jump on them with your skateboard. Your character moves around pretty fast, especially when he's on the skateboard. But you know, if you run over some grass, you slow down significantly. So at that point, I'm just like, well, just make me stop completely and I'll start over. There's a lot of different screens to get through, and it's a bit of a maze trying to find all these jumps. But when you do find a ramp, it's really cool watching him jump over it. Well, I guess jump on it. <laughs> I don't know, I find the graphics to be really nice and varied. I mean, I guess it could kind of get old if you knew where all the ramps were. But honestly, I've never finished the entire game before. But I always enjoy playing this game and uh, giving it a run through. Well, at least as far as I can get, anyway. Solaris by Doug New Neuerbauer, the same programmer who created Star Raiders for the Atari 400 and 800 computer and also Radar Lock. So your goal is to fly through the galaxy and destroy all the enemy invaders. And you have a map screen that you can use to go to the different sectors in your galaxy. That's where the Star Raiders influence kind of comes in. You do have to travel to each sector and protect your star bases. I love the graphics when you land on a planet, it just looks so cool. Especially how like the craters scroll by and everything. And then when you go into hyper warp, it just looks so amazing.
This is without a doubt one of the best games for the 2600 and for some reason every time I play it I always think of that uh, Atari under 50 bucks ad where they say Solaris is hot and midnight magic's mean. This game is so huge I can't imagine anyone actually beating it but it's pretty fun to try at least. Next is Activision's Space Shuttle A Journey Into Space. This game totally blew my mind back in the day. I was so into this game, I would just play it constantly. And I think I, I even beat it on like the hardest level and captured the satellite as many times as you possibly could. But basically in the game, your goal is to fly the space shuttle in a very accurate representation of said shuttle. Well, I mean, at least as far as the 2600 can do. I always felt like I really was in the shuttle. Now I'm playing the most basic mode here, which just basically kind of walks you through the whole game. But in the harder stages, I mean, you have to do so much as, you know, raise your landing gear, open up the bay doors, control the amount of fuel that's being used as you launch the shuttle. But this really is such an amazing game. I always got to pull it out every so often just to give it a go, just to relive those memories that I had back in the day. All right, next is a game called Space Master X7. And this game I learned about because I used to watch uh, the movie Revenge of the Nerds a lot. But there's a scene in the gymnasium when the nerds get kicked out of their um, dorm and the character of Wormser is playing this game on the TV. But I saw that and I'm like, what is that game he's playing? I gotta check it out. And it's called Space Master X7 and it's a really cool game. It's kind of like Star Castle, where you have to destroy this base in the middle of the screen that's protected by a shield. But in this game, you can actually fly into the shield and shoot the base. It's pretty cool. You also have to avoid these really weird uh, enemies that come squiggling out of the base. And of course it ramps up in difficulty as you play, but this is a really, really fun game. And it kind of proves to me that uh, you could do Star Castle on the 2600. Hmm. And now Darth Vader demands that you play the first Star Wars game, The Empire Strikes Back, created by Parker Brothers on your Atari 2600. The game is really simple. All you have to do is fly your snow speeder and shoot at the walkers. If you hit that little flashing square on the walker, they'll disintegrate immediately. Or you can hit them, I think, what, 42 times and they'll finally blow up. Occasionally your snow speeder will be endowed with force powers, which means you're invincible for a little while. And if you get hit a few times, you might want to land so that you can restore the power of your snow speeder. I didn't know that for a really long time. This is a really simple game, but I mean, it works. I really feel like I was flying a snow speeder back then. Even today, this game is a lot of fun to play. Even though you can't really win, I guess that's kind of like the movie. There was no way that the rebellion was going to escape the empire in that scene. There hasn't really been too much in the way of a modernized version of this game. I mean, sure, you can fly as snow speeders and battle at at walkers in, in modern games, but I mean, obviously, it doesn't feel like this game does. Now, let's talk about Stellar Trek and how it's the most fun looking at text you will ever have. Basically, this is the original Star Trek computer game on the Atari 2600. You travel from sector to sector, destroying Klingons and protecting your star bases. It's a little bit less action-oriented than a game like Solaris is, but it really has a cool fun factor to it. I mean, just the fact that you're, well, I was going to say flying the Enterprise. I mean, obviously, this isn't the Enterprise because this isn't Star Trek. It's Stellar Trek, which is completely different from Star Trek. I mean, sure, the graphics are really nothing to write home about, but to me, it was pretty mind-blowing to be able to play this game on the 2600 back in the day. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I had no idea what this game was until I went over to a friend's house and started playing it. And I learned pretty quickly how to move the ship around and how to fire phasers and fire photons and everything. But again, for some reason, this game just really strikes a chord with me. And I I've always found it fun. 
Coming up is Superman, where your goal is to fly around from screen to screen, capture Lex Luthor and his henchmen by putting them in jail, and restore the bridge to Gotham City. Wait, not Gotham City. Metropolis. Yeah, yeah, there you go. As you fly around, you might get hit with a kryptonite satellite and lose your powers, so you might have to find Lois Lane to give you a peck on the cheek to restore your powers. Also, if you hold down the button, you can use your x-ray vision to see what's on the different screens. And I just love the ability to fly around in this game. It's just so cool. Honestly, I think this might be the best Superman game ever created. I mean, it's surely a lot better than Superman 64. But the nice thing about this game is that, you know, you can play it for a few minutes and get some enjoyment out of it and move on with your day. You know, you're not stuck playing a game for 60 hours like some of these games today. And I know it's cheesy to say, but I really do feel like I'm Superman when I'm playing this game. And you're not going to find this on any other system. It's a 2600 exclusive! Next might be another odd choice, and that is Video Pinball. And I remember getting this game when I was a kid, and I just loved it. I know it doesn't feel like pinball at all, and it's really weird how you can control the ball. <laughs> you could, like, move the ball around on the screen. But I had such a blast playing this. It's really a very, very basic version of pinball, and some might say that, you know, Midnight Magic is a better game. But for some reason, I like this one better. I feel like Midnight Magic is just a little bit boring, and this one is just more enjoyable to me. I understand if you don't agree, that's fine. But this is a game I'll always find fun. Here's a game that I don't think will be controversial, and that is Yar's Revenge. You know, I just realized that we have a trifecta here. All of Howard Scott Warshaw's games are in this video. But you know what? I'm gonna give it to him. He was a great programmer. And Yar's Revenge is just a total blast to play. I mean, most people know the story that uh, Howard was asked to create Star Castle for the 2600, and he decided that uh, that was going to be too complicated for him to make, and he could create this original game called Yar's Revenge much easier. And in this game, you play as a Yar, which is a fly, whose goal is to eat the Quotile's shield so that you can destroy it with the Zorlon cannon. And occasionally, it will turn into a swirling glaive and try to attack you, and if it hits you, you're gonna die immediately. <laughs> You also have to avoid this missile that just kind of floats around very slowly, just kind of keeps you from getting uh, too complacent. But you can hide from it in that little weird zone in the middle of the playfield. And there's two different stages. You have the static shield and then you have the rotating shield. Honestly, I kind of wish there were more shield types. Now, I've seen versions of this game for the Game Boy, and I don't remember what was the other one. There was some other version out there, but honestly, there's really no other version of Yar's Revenge that is better than the 2600 game. <laughs> So there you have it, fun Atari 2600 games that will never get old. To me, this just proves that even today you need to own an Atari 2600 so that you can play these games. Or, you know, you could just emulate them. Anyway, I thank you for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.